Hi guys, Pete the Wargamer here, back with another Lord of the Rings painting tutorial. This time I'll be showing you how to paint Aragorn, son of Arathorn, from the Three Hunters box set. And as always, I'll be using the Citadel range of paints to do so. Now before I go on, I just want to say a big thank you to Firestorm Games for providing me with the miniature used in this tutorial. Be sure to check out the link below for discounts on Games Workshop products. Before we can begin painting, we first of all need to prime. I've chosen grey as my base colour as it will really help with applying the various midtones of the miniature. I've also opted to use an airbrush primer, but feel free to use your own brand and method of priming. I've also only partly assembled the miniature and have kept Aragorn's sword hand separate and have attached a length of wire to it. This was achieved by drilling a small hole into the rear of the forearm with a pin vise and supergluing a length of 1mm wire to it. We'll start things off by painting all of the base colours of the miniature, but before you apply any base coats, you'll want to thin down your paint. So for each base coat, take your paint and mix it with a little water. Add some water in small amounts until your paint has a consistency similar to what you see here. For our first step, I've opted to use a bad in black to paint the trousers and the glove. I've started here as it makes good sense to paint from the inside out. This means you're not trying to reach past areas you've already painted and potentially make mistakes. Using your thinned mixture, you'll want to apply at least two coats of paint, allowing the first layer to dry before applying the next. This will give you a good, smooth base colour in which to work up from in later steps. To base coat Aragorn's boots, apply some dryad bark thinned in the same way as we did in the previous step. To paint Aragorn's hair as well as his tabard, belt, dagger handle and braces, I'll be using some Rhinox Hide. This dark brown paint will serve as a great starting point for several different shades of brown. To paint the coat, I've opted to use some Castellan Green. Its muted green-brown colour is perfect for representing the faded and worn material. Don't forget to paint the cuffs that are poking out from the braces as well. For the Elven Cloak, I'll be starting off with a base coat of Mechanica Standard Grey. As the cloak is a greyish green, we'll be able to add a subtle green hue over the top of this grey base coat in a later step. To paint the bare skin of Aragorn's face and hands, we'll be using a base coat of Bugman's Glow. Next up, we have our metallic paints, and we'll be starting things off by painting the silver metallic areas using Lead Belcher. These areas include the sword, even star pendant, the edging of the leaf brooch, and finally the belt loop. Once you've finished your lead belcher base coat, make sure that you thoroughly clean your paintbrush and change your paint water. This is to prevent cross-contamination of the metal flakes into your other paints. With our base coats completed, we can begin work on achieving some gradients in some of the fabric areas. For these steps, we'll need to create some mixtures using Lamium Medium. Start by creating a mixture of three parts Lamia medium to one part paint. This medium is basically a pigmentless paint that will allow us to create some translucent mixtures. For our first gradient, I've started with dryad bark and I'll be using it to pick out the raised edges and folds in Aragorn's tunic. Apply the mixture to these raised areas, leaving the darker rhinox hide visible in the deeper areas. Allow the first layer to dry and then apply a second layer over the top. However, slightly reduce the area that you're covering this time. Repeat the step again to create a smooth transition between the darker Rhinox hide and the lighter Dryad bark. You can also apply this technique to the upper parts of Aragorn's hair to represent the light being more prominent on these parts. Repeat the same steps as before, however this time we'll be using some Gorthor Brown to pick out the slightly more raised parts of the boots. The next transition will be applied to the coat, and for this, I'll be making use of a mixture of Lauren Forest and Lamia Medium. Again, the muted green of Lauren Forest will help to maintain that worn and shabby appearance of the coat. Once again, we'll be painting the Elven Cloak using another grey paint. This time, we'll be creating our gradient mixture using Dawnstone. As I mentioned earlier, we want to give the Elven Cloak a slightly greenish tint. To achieve this, I'll be using the Glaze Waywatcher Green. This translucent paint will subtly adjust the colour of the currently grey cloak. However, applying it straight from the pot is much too strong, so we need to again bring in our Lamia Medium. Create a mixture of four parts Lamia Medium to one part glaze and apply this over the entire cloak. Remember this isn't a wash, so we want to have an even application. Allow your first layer to dry and if you're not happy with the colour, simply apply a second coat over the top. 
The final lamium medium mixture to apply before we move on to the washes is for the face. At the moment, Aragorn is looking a little too rosy, but we can fix this with some lamia medium and Kislev flesh mixed together in equal parts, much like our previous mixtures. Apply your mixture to the more prominent facial features such as the forehead, nose, cheeks and fingers, leaving the darker Bugman's glow visible in those recesses. After the first coat has dried, apply a second layer, but instead only focus on the harshest facial features like the bridge of the nose, brow and cheekbones. This layering technique combined with the Lamium medium thinning will help to create a smoother and much more realistic looking transition between the darker Bugman's glow and the lighter Kislev flesh. With our gradients completed, we can now begin applying some washes. However, before you go applying it straight to the miniature, you'll first want to slightly thin it out using some Lamium medium once again. This time, I would suggest a mixture of one part wash to two parts Lamium medium. This will reduce its strength slightly and prevent it from being too overpowering. Instead of Lamium medium, you could instead use a little bit of water. However, this will make the mixture a little bit runnier. So be careful when you're applying it and make sure you don't allow too much to pour in those recesses. The first wash to use is non-oil and this will be applied over the hair, tunic and any metal parts of the miniature. The intention here is to add some shading to the deeper recesses, further enhancing our transitions and bringing out details in the metal areas. Using the same technique as before, this time we'll be applying a wash of Agrax Earthshade over the boots and the coat. The reason I've chosen a brown wash for these areas is to give them a slightly dirty appearance, perfect for creating Aragorn's rugged exterior. Our final wash is one of Reikland Flesh Shade. This will be applied to the face and hands of Aragorn. This will flow into the recesses and help to bring out those facial features. Whilst we're already working on the face, we might as well add in some extra details. First, mix in some Eschen Grey with some Lamia Medium in two parts medium to paint and apply this over the cheeks, chin and upper lip to add some stubble. Using some Rhinox Hide thinned with a little water, you can then carefully paint on the goatee of Aragorn's beard and also along his jawline. The next few steps involve applying some edge highlights. For the first of these, we'll be using Eschen Grey to paint any areas that we painted with a bad and black. To edge highlight, use a small brush with only a little paint and carefully drag your brush along the most prominent edges where the light falls. This will create a thin, lighter colored line along the edge which will help to make those details stand out. For the edging of the boots, apply a small line of Bane Blade Brown. You can also apply some vertical lines along the toe to create some scuff effects. For the leather tunic and also the braces, we want to tackle the edges with Gorthor Brown. When painting the tunic, you can easily create the effect of wear and tear to the bottom of the tunic with some vertical and diagonal lines. Start painting these lines from the hem and move your brush upwards. Using the similar techniques as we've used on the hem of the tunic, we'll be using some Doomble Brown to pick out the leather belt, the upper edge of the braces and also the undershirt. To highlight the most prominent folds of the jacket and also to add some weathering to it, I'll be using some Strachan Green. For the folds in the Alvin cloak, as well as the small trees of Gondor on the braces, I'll be picking these out using some Administratum Grey. The final highlight for painting Aragorn is to pick out all the metallic areas using some Stormhost Silver. This will really help these areas to stand out and also give the effect that light is reflecting off their shiny surfaces. And here we have the completed Aragorn. I finished things off by varnishing and assembling the components before creating a simple basing scheme using some textured paint and grass tufts. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, a big thank you to Firestorm Games for providing the miniature used in this tutorial. If you're looking for discounted Warhammer, you should check out their web store. Also, if you enjoy my channel, I've also produced a range of videos for the Firestorm Games YouTube channel that you should also check out as well. You can find a full list of all the paints that I've used in this tutorial in the description below, along with any other equipment that I've used to create this video. If you have any questions or would just like to chat with others who enjoy my channel, I've set up a Discord server which you can find a link to in the description below. And so the only thing left to say is thanks for watching and goodbye.